Yes, your church can reproduce. Nine freedoms of Christian churches that multiply. Churches that reproduce and multiply normally enjoy the following nine freedoms. Pastors, priests, and elders must ensure that members of their churches practice these God-given freedoms. Those who do will see their church start new churches anywhere. I am the right reverend tradition. I will not allow any of these freedoms, for in the church God has given all authority to the clergy. That means me. Freedom 1. Freedom for young churches to start newer churches as soon as the Lord makes it possible. Action. Empower tiny teams who are willing to take the good news to others, helping them to start new little churches. For example, Epaphras, who went from Ephesus to his hometown of Colossae. Letting laymen try to do ministry would waste your time and finances, false doctrine would creep in, and church unity would be lost. Advice Identify and contact individuals in your church who want to serve Jesus. Form little churches with them. Then coach these to share about Jesus and to start home gatherings. Freedom 2. Freedom to obey all the commands of Christ and his apostles above and before all religious rules and traditions. Action. Instruct and authorize willing workers to implement any command of Jesus as soon as they have an opportunity. For example, Jesus' condemnation of religious leaders who put tradition before the word of God. We must follow our denominational policies because conformity ensures unity, decency, and order. Advice. Hold workshops to practice with workers some ways in which to help new gatherings obey basic commands of Jesus. Freedom 3. Freedom to enter the homes of unconverted seekers evangelizing them and making disciples within their culture and family. Action. Identify current opportunities to teach obedience to seekers and to new believers. Lay a plan to do so. For example, Peter at Cornelia's house and Paul with the Philippian jailer. You must separate new believers from the bad influence of friends, relatives, and culture. Advice. Have workers draw maps of current households, potential ones, and potential workers. Pray for the Lord to prepare more households, friends, and social groups. Freedom 4. Freedom to baptize new believers without delay and to celebrate the Lord's table wherever they meet. Action. Lay hands on workers, delegating pastoral authority to them to implement the sacraments in new gatherings. Example. The apostles implemented 21 commands of Jesus amongst new churches. Baptism and the Lord's Supper may be performed only by ordained clergy. Advice. Identify workers who have entered households. Plan to lay hands on them in the presence of other workers. Freedom 5. Freedom to serve one another in the body of Christ as intimate, loving churches and cells using all the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given to them. Action. Teach workers all of the one another commands from the New Testament. For example, the Corinthian gatherings in which all have an opportunity to exercise their spiritual gift. To ensure that all things are done decently and in order, only qualified clergy should lead and speak in public meetings. Advice. 
Write plans and training materials for church planters and shepherds to ensure group interaction, letting the Holy Spirit work powerfully. Freedom 6. Freedom to provide pastoral leadership by those who meet the qualifications of elders with or without a salary or theological education. Action. Set up coaching chains by which volunteer workers train new workers on the job. For example, Paul with Timothy and others who trained others also to a third or fourth generation. Our church bylaws require pastors to attend seminary, to earn a degree, and to be salaried. Advice. Write plans to commission publicly each church's apostles and shepherds, noting when and where you will do so. Freedom 7. Freedom to apply any New Testament method of preaching and teaching God's Word that suits each group's size and its leader's maturity. Action. Demonstrate and practice the use of dialogue, group discovery Bible study, and member participation. For example, Paul and his co-workers dialoguing at Troas. God has ordained the preaching of the word for this age. We need top quality and excellence in the pulpit. Advice. Employ in training leaders the very methods that they must implement in new churches and cells. Freedom 8. Freedom for pastoral trainers to respond to immediate needs of new churches and leaders. Action. Write plans to choose or develop a menu of resources with which to train your church's apostles and shepherds. For example, Jesus planning with his apostles and listening to their reports. Seminaries have the best curriculum for educating clergy. Let us not allow church's weaknesses to distract us. Advice. Coach all trainers and leaders in the use of a menu to choose training materials that correspond to church's current opportunities and urgent needs. Freedom 9. Freedom to appoint regional coordinators who supervise new and immature churches and pastoral leaders. Action. Recognized experienced workers and empower them to appoint elders in every new church, arranging to train them on the job. For example, Paul commissioned Titus to appoint pastoral leaders on the island of Crete. We do not want a godless hierarchy dictating to churches what to believe and to do. We hold to the autonomy of the local church from its inception till its demise. Advice. Identify those workers whose passion is to keep churches multiplying. Write and update a register of leaders with whom to cooperate in sending church planters and trainers.